Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about uh, descriptive statistics. This will be my first video on statistics series. I'm going to make subsequent videos on various topics on statistics, uh, but uh, I'm starting uh, from the very basics and the first one is descriptive statistics. There are several things that we can talk about descriptive statistics. Descriptive statistics uh, basically describes your data. We basically collect our data from real world and then uh, we describe it. The main aspects of descriptive statistics are some measures of central tendency, such as mean, median and mod. Uh, we are going to talk about all these uh, measures of central tendency as well as there are some measures of dispersion like uh, standard deviation and variance. But uh, we need to understand our data first before using uh, those measures of center tendency and uh, measures of dispersion. Well, the first measure of center tendency that we're going to talk about is mean. We are basically uh, more or less familiar with this uh, measure of central tendency. It is uh, average of all the samples. When we talk about samples, it is uh, a subset of the whole population. We are trying to um, infer some data about our population by sampling that population. Uh, for example, if we want to measure the whole uh, world's population's uh, average height, we cannot uh, do that um, because it's not feasible to uh, measure the height of all the people of the whole world. What we can do, we can take a sample and if that sample uh, is uh, collected in an unbiased way, then we can say that that sample is a true representative of that population and we can um, measure various statistics about that sample. One of those statistics is mean. If that sample is unbiased and is a true representative of the population, that sample mean will be very close to the actual population mean. That means if uh, we have a very good sample in our hand and we measure the average height of all the people of uh, within that sample, then that average will be very close to the actual population mean. So mean is basically the average of all the samples. The second measure of center tendency that we're going to talk about is median. Median is the midpoint of all the samples. Uh, here in order to obtain median from our sample we need to um, uh, make we need to sort our sample in ascending or descending order and uh, just uh, take the uh, middle point of uh, that uh, ordered sample. Uh, when we uh, calculate mean, we add all those uh, samples and divide that uh, divide that summation by the number total number of samples. Uh, but here we need to sort all the samples and just uh, take the midpoint. If the total number of sample is an odd number, then we just take the midpoint. Um, um, uh, on the other hand, if uh, the total number of samples is an even number, we just uh, add the two midpoints and divide, by, divide that number by two. Uh, that's how we get the median. The third measure of center tendency is uh, mod. It is uh, the least uh, used measure uh, of center tendency compared to mean and median. Uh, to obtain mod, we just want to, uh, we don't need to sort that one. We need to um, collect that um, sample that occurs most often. Um, 
mode is that number that has the highest probability to uh, to occur within the sample let's say if we have a sample that have the highest number 5 that occurs most often then our mode is 5 but mean and median may be different than this mode now I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of using mean and median in different cases uh, in real world uh, most of the time we have uh, skewed data uh, here I am going to draw a distribution uh, it may, may not be a perfect skewed distribution I'm trying to uh, draw a skewed distribution here so here you can see that this distribution is uh, skewed on the right side similarly we can have a skewed distribution which can be skewed on the left side and ideally we can have a normal distribution uh, real world data are not normal most often uh, those are either skewed on the right side or skewed on the left side or maybe some other types of distribution uh, maybe bimodal maybe trimodal maybe some other um, kind of distribution it will follow uh, but uh, here I'm going to talk about the uh, times when we should use uh, mean and when we should use median as a measure of center tendency uh, in in case of normal distribution the mean and median are exactly the same point which is the midpoint here this is the mean and this is the median for in case of a normal distribution but when uh, the distribution is skewed for example if the distribution is uh, skewed on the right side the mean also shifts on the right side this is uh, the mean this is mean but the median is not shifted this is median here uh, same here for uh, left skewed distribution uh, if we want to get the median the median shifts uh, towards left but uh, the mean shifts towards left but the median is not shifted maybe somewhere here so why this happens because uh, because of skewed distributions uh, we have some kind of outliers or extreme high values or extreme low values here uh, the values of those uh, extreme cases um, draws the mean towards them uh, those extreme values or extreme outliers have a huge impact on the position of mean uh, that's why the mean uh, is shifted towards those extreme values those extreme values may be either uh, high or maybe or, or low values something like this so uh, if our distribution is normal or nearly normal we can use either mean or median but if our distribution is skewed or if we suspect that our distribution contains some extreme values or outliers it is better to use median um, as a measure of center tendency in real world we can have outliers uh, due to many reasons um, the uh, values can be typed uh, wrong or because maybe uh, any human can make a mistake or the data collection process uh, may be different than others uh, uh, the outliers uh, may occur due to various reasons so if we suspect uh, again I'm saying that one if we suspect that our data is containing a very high value or very low value or in other words it is uh, it, it contains uh, some outliers those outlier values will draw the mean towards them so the outlier data points uh, 
data points are here let's say these are the points here and these extreme values will draw the mean towards them these are the data points here and they will draw the mean towards them so if those uh, extreme values are there for no reason or if we suspect that those are some uh, human a result of some human error then we need to uh, be very careful including those extreme values in our calculation um, if you suspect that those are outliers we can just ignore those and um, and make our calculation without those values or in other words if we want to include if we want to include those values we can just use median and uh, get the get a measure of central tendency the next thing I'm going to talk about is uh, uh, some measures of a dispersion uh, something like uh, standard deviation or variance these two measures are um, basically same because variance is just the square of a standard deviation but I'd like to uh, emphasize the idea why do we need standard deviation or variance in order to uh, measure the dispersion why do we need that in order to understand the real reason to use standard deviation or uh, variance let's consider two data set uh, the first data set contains just two values five comma five and we have another data set which contains also two values uh, which is, which are zero and ten so we have uh, these uh, two data sets here one contains five and five and the other one zero and ten the average of this first data set is five plus five divided by two which is two the average of this uh, data set 0 plus 10 over 2 um, by 2 is uh, there is also 5 so the average of these two data sets are same but uh, how can we differentiate these two data sets the answer is standard deviation uh, the deviation between these two points 5 and 5 is 0 but the deviation between these two values 0 and 10 is 10 so there are huge difference in terms of dispersion between these two data sets uh, you can always go back to any textbook and uh, to get the formula how to calculate the standard deviation but I'm trying to emphasize uh, to uh, um, the understanding behind the use of standard deviation or vari variance uh, mean or median cannot differentiate uh, data sets uh, something like this but standard deviation comes into the picture uh, when this kind of cases arise we need to differentiate these two data sets in terms of uh, dispersion it uh, uh, the standard deviation tells us how much deviated and uh, the values within the samples are from each other in this first data set the deviation is zero but in the second data set the deviation is much higher than the first data set all right that's our first lesson on statistics series uh, I will keep uh, making some videos on other statistics topics hope to see you there <music>